Good evening, everybody. This is Cinnamon Noir. Welcome back to Deltarune Chapter 2. Hmm. I think we've finally found the right place to put the statue. It really sets off the toilet. Hmm. Oh, it's a pool. I love pools. Let's go swimming. Yes. In case you forgot, the queen enjoys drinking battery acid. So this means absolutely nothing to the queen. She could just she could just swim all day through this. Oh. Oh dear. And uh this this Nickelodeon music is certainly enhancing the bizarre vibe of this scene. Yes, we must distract the queen. Be distracted. I, I can't help but feel, you know, that walking into a scenario that the Queen specifically engineered for us doesn't quite constitute distracting her. But, you know, maybe I'm just being pessimistic. The plan will work. I need to trust the plan. Oh, well, I don't know what I'll say. I do like banana. You have to get banana when you see banana. That's the rule of banana. And for some reason, the house didn't go off there, which is a little confusing. I suppose you have to be a certain distance from it. Except that doesn't entirely make sense, because that one didn't go off, and I was right next to it. Hmm. Suspicious. Hmm. It's a hand. Hmm. Maybe we can talk to it. I really do not like the sprite of the squishy squ uh, swan float being scrunched up against that hand. It's kind of gross looking. So yeah, here we have another puzzle. Which, this one should be fairly obvious. When you uh, touch one of the houses, it changes from showing the uh, blue... Sorry, it, sh it changes from having the blue stepping stones being up to having the red ones that are attached to the same house being up. Hmm. More statues disappearing. How many copies did Birdley make of that statue? Because I'm not even sure the world needed one, really, when you get right down to it. Hmm. Yeah, that's not... That's not gonna work. We need to find a way to get the one on the left first before we do the one on the right. Oop. Oh, hello there. A little house cleaning. Oh, Toby Fox. Uh. Oh, yes, very helpful. Let's go ahead and break that. Oh. You're just an old softy. So, yeah, as far as I can tell, that room was entirely pointless. But we did save that guy's life. So, you know. I guess it's sort of a Toby Fox thing, right? You know, if you can save a fictional character's life, maybe life isn't so pointless. <coughs> Sorry about that. <coughs> and yes, what I discovered is that, in fact, I was wrong earlier. We needed to get the one on the right first, and then do the one on the left. And that will work out, generally. Yeah, both of these guys start out tired, which means Rossi can just use the pacify spell on them. Very helpful. Or at least it will be if I can stop getting hit. But actually, I am lacking in TP, so I'm not able to pacify them. Which is a bit of a which is a bit of a pain. Wait, there we go. Now I decide to waste my TP on foolishly healing my friends instead of getting rid of my enemies, which is what magic is actually for. Forget friendship. Yeah, that healing would have made sense if I had been able to stop getting hit, because I'm really only healing as much as would as much damage as would be done by a single one of their moves. So it's not like I'm really helping that much here. But we got through it. 
Oh, and there's a little castle. That's not even... Was it attacking the castle? But it was the Queen's castle. Surely it should have been protecting the castle. Doesn't make sense. Toby Fox is weird. Mm. More Mises. Let us send out the Mises. So yes, in this, what you're trying to do is get the treasure chests. But, if you get the mice into the houses first, obviously, you won't be able to send them toward the treasure chests, and you won't get what the treasure chests contain. Even though you should absolutely want that. So yes, it's a similar rule as before. When the mice go through one of these things, they will... Oh, I had it completely backwards. The goal is actually to get the mice into the houses before you send them to the treasure chest, because otherwise the mice will take what is in the treasure chest with their tiny paws, and then you won't get to have it. Although, from what I can see, there is no path onto there anyway, so why on earth you would think you could get there in the first place, I don't know. There we go. So yes, I really have no idea what the treasure chests are for. Are they just a joke? If the mice get the stuff, do you eventually get it? Do you have to get them to get both chests? Is it completely meaningless? Probably. Nice hand slam. It's a little weird though, because I'm pretty sure that's actually two left hands. Could be wrong. And our swan is no longer squished, so we can continue to float. So peaceful. And I'm sure we're doing a great job of distracting the queen with this. Her eyes are just riveted to us. Not that we can tell, because there's no screens. Uh, yeah, sure. Friendship. I said at the beginning of this chapter that uh, one of the things I liked about this chapter was that it would, it reminded me of friendship and what's important. Uh, this section definitely has a lot to do with that. So Ralsei is starting to understand that friends don't always act totally nice to each other. But what they do is they care about each other. And they want to spend time with each other. That's what I think is important. Friendship is not about always saying the right thing or doing the right thing. It's about understanding the people you're with and being able to enjoy them for who they are. That was definitely a tough thing with me and Greg. Um, it was hard for me to really get through to Greg. He was always a very quiet, reserved, withdrawn kind of guy. And one of the saddest things to me about the end of our friendship was that I feel like, despite knowing him for a decade, I never really got to know him. He was so withdrawn. I'm just going to continue talking about this, by the way, because I hate this whole section and this character. Screw this character. I'm going to keep talking about friendship. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Um, Greg always played his cards so close to his chest. I feel like he didn't confide in me. And that was a hard thing for me, because I've always felt that a friend is someone you can talk to and someone you can count on. It felt like I could never do anything for Greg, that he wouldn't trust me with anything. And he always seemed to be alone in that respect which is a really tough position to be in. I've been in that position all the time. In fact, I've been in it even more ever since Greg and I stopped talking. So... <sighs> it's just tough. Friendship is tough. Keeping it up is tough. And it's especially tough to deal with when people just don't want to be your friend anymore. Sometimes you just have to be able to accept that. I'm trying to get to there. But it's a long road. So yeah, this section is kind of interesting. It looks like a battle, but it's really not. This is a turn-based puzzle, where the goal is sort of like Reversi or Othello. Or actually, this is more like Go. The objective is to take as many houses as you possibly can and cut off the other guy, in this case, Real Prowlx, or whatever his name was, from taking others. And you can do that by cutting him off. 
and uh, Ralx here is saying that his name is pronounced Rules, which I don't care about because his name is clearly Ralx. You must construct more pylons. No, so you can do a thing with Ralse where you can take multiple houses in a row, and this is where you can really start to screw him over. So, one of the interesting things about Toby Fox games is they don't really get harder in the end game. You start doing different things in the end game, but it's not so much that. Uh, it's not so much that things get harder as they just get different. Which is something I have a little bit of trouble accepting with Toby Fox games, is that they're not oriented toward challenge. They're oriented toward the experience. And I guess in a way I can understand that, but at the same time, as a gamer, like Birdly, it is a little bit difficult. Well, I should hope that ship is lively. After all, I made it. The one way in which this is like a traditional battle is that you dodge his attacks. Which is a little strange, since it has nothing to do with the actual challenge of this. But, you know, whatever. It, it's kind of funny. I said earlier that I like Chapter 2, and I think it's comparable to Chapter 1 in its quality. But what I would definitely say is, Chapter 1 is fairly consistently good. Chapter 2, not so much. Even though I would say the beginning of Chapter 2 is very strong, the ending of Chapter to me is not quite as good. It has some high highs, but for the most part, it's very inconsistent. And you have a lot of stuff like this, which is kind of... It's difficult for me to say that it's good. So yes, we have in fact cut him off at this point. And now he cannot take any more houses, so we have won. And he is lost. Poor Ralx. Another victim of this silly game. Oh. You know what? <laughs> I forgot, he's from the other world too, just like Lancer, so he's, he's dead. That guy's dead. And we're not even going to pick him up and take him to the other world, so he, he's just gone. Poor son of a bitch. Just walk on by. Don't look him in the eye. Nope. No eye contact whatsoever. Um. Well, this is interesting. So yes, this is a rather earthbound touch. In earthbound, you might know that there's a little guy who spirals down and takes your picture. And that's what happens here. <laughs> I'm going to really look forward to seeing the back of our heads in a couple of hours. You wouldn't want to see the picture of Ralx, Rules, whatever your stupid name is. Ralx is for Falx. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> the funny thing is, even though I pick the choices in this game that indicate friendship, the truth is really a lot more ambivalent. Like, I like Susie, but I'm not sure I actually care about what she's doing right now. I also find it interesting that, uh... <laughs> we were wondering about Susie, but this is just Noel. We're not seeing Susie. Oh. There we go. Finally Susie's appeared. The rarely seen appearance of the Rude Buster. So this is, in fact, the first scene where Susie and Noelle are alone together. And we already kind of know that Noelle is a thing for Susie, so this has the potential to be very awkward. And let me tell you, that potential is completely realized. It's a bad place. A place powered by bad. Real Susie would kick your ass. Ooh. Harsh truth. Drop on the truth bomb. Yeah. 
Susie shall always remember the taste of that pencil and the joy that it brang. Also the color it brang to her tongue. <laughs> Look here. I ate a pencil. I'm not ashamed of that. I think depending on which side of the axe she hits you with, you might not wake up. Hmm. Birdly waited for that puzzle before. He sure as hell can wait now. We've got an awkward Toby Fox romance scene, trademark, to get through here. Everybody loves the ATFRS. Every time I see a Ferris wheel, it reminds me of a scene from The Third Man, where this happens. Which, honestly, I would rather be seeing here, because it's a more interesting scene. This scene is fine, I mean, it's okay, but really, it is kind of an awkward romance. The thing about Toby Fox is he likes these sort of school crush-style romances, but he has a bit of a George Lucas quality. I think he's a little awkward writing them. Some people might relate to this, but frankly, I don't. Maybe I just hate sand. <laughs> no, Noelle does not hate sand. In fact, she likes being scared. Uh, maybe a little dysfunctionally, actually. It's a bit, a bit Stockholm Syndrome. That's true. You can't turn off real life, and real life is scary, too. afraid to push the envelope, ride the line. Something nuts, something crazy. Let's go crazy, let's get nuts. Jump out the window! I don't know why holiday was capitalized in that sentence. Perhaps holiday is the name of a holiday in this strange monster world? Could be, don't know. Toby Fox? Mm. Susie could probably wreck this whole city even just being her normal size. Mm. There's really no good way to answer that question. How often do you dream about being Godzilla? Is it like more than three hours a day? More than eight hours a day? Does your tail always do that when you lie? Quite a loaded question. Oh, poor Susie. She's tied herself up into knots at this point. Which is very uncomfortable when you're a snake. And just a reminder, everyone, Susie is in fact a snake. She is not a horse, like I erroneously thought. That was okay. Certainly less awkward than the date with Papyrus and Undertale. I, I will say, to be a little serious here for a moment, that one of the things I like about this game is that it has more actual characters in it, and they interact with each other in different combinations more often. There's less of that quality of characters just talking your ear off, and you're Frisk, so you don't have a personality, so it really is just a monologue. Here there's a lot more dialogue, and I appreciate that. It means you can have the fun dynamics, like the love triangle between Susie, Noel, and Birdly. Not to worry, Noelle. I have realized my, the truth that I am stupid. You dumb, boy. Chicken nugget boy. And she just jumps down. Legs broken. Lab partners for life. <laughs> I'm glad you realized that all of your plans frickin' failed.
No, the truth is, Birdly wanted to apologize. Because he's not in love with Noelle anymore. And he knew that Noelle was into him. Like, super into him. But it's just not gonna happen. There's somebody else. There's somebody else, if you know what I mean. Look at those anime eyes. <laughs> Holy c This went south quickly. <laughs> Meanwhile, back to the two most boring characters in the game. <laughs> and by the way, that was sarcasm. Reminds me of uh, the episode of Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends where Mac tells Blue that he doesn't understand why Blue says he doesn't get sarcasm because Blue uses it all the time. And Blue says, oh yeah, Mac, I use it all the time. Oh, well. Here's a character who's very important. No, so he's telling you to recruit everyone, which I'm not going to do because I play games my own way. And I'm sorry, Toby Fox, but that's just the way it's got to be. So here we have the where where wire because um, Toby Fox has a little bit of trouble naming enemies. It kind of reminds me actually of Kingdom Hearts, where you have the Heartless at the beginning, who are just these basic characters, and then near the end you have like the super evolved Heartless, who are based on the same general concept, but they're some of the hardest enemies in the game. I'm not sure I entirely like that way of designing enemies. It does seem a little bit simplistic, like you know. You fight a Goombas at the beginning of Mario, and then what if at the end, one of the enemies was just a super-duper Goomba? Seems a little bit formulaic to me, but I can get over it. Alright. The other thing I don't like about this enemy in particular is that it uses exactly the same attack that Ralks or Rulks, or whatever his stupid name is, just used. Which means it's repetition, you know, it can get a little boring. Not a fan of that. I'm also not a fan of getting hit, so let's go back to the first floor and get healed up. Much better. Also, buy more stuff, because I am sensing that very soon, money is going to mean absolutely nothing. Until Chapter 3 comes out. You know, in the next 11 years from now. So yeah, here's the room where Susie found Noel, with a really cool statue that actually resembles the picture of the monster from uh, the intro to the game. Probably not coincidentally, since that character more or less was supposed to stand in for Susie. And yeah, we're just stealing everything. I mean, really, we don't like Queen. Like, why should we scruple about stealing anything from Queen after she stole our best friend from us and threatened to turn her face into a robot? Every day is Christmas. Apparently this is the Hallmark Channel. Cool. Let's be careful here. Or not. Yeah. Honestly, I cannot see what that in particular adds to this final section of the game. I suppose it's just a way for you to lose some health so this last section is a little bit more mm -hmm. tense. But honestly, not much. Oh, hey there. We haven't seen you in the flesh in a long, long time, Queen. I'm not an idiot child. I'm an idiot man, Queen. Yeah, Noelle's with Birdly, and that means nothing bad could possibly happen. Oh. Now compatible with iPhone. <laughs> Cruel laughter intensifies. Ah, yes. What a fun shame. So yes, we will now be attacking the Queen and Birdly at the same exact time. And it says the Queen is defenseless, but is she really? I mean, think about it. We got Birdly on hand. Birdly would do anything for the Queen. As long as he's stuck to that stupid plunger.
Getting some shades of Mother 3 here. Mother 3, of course, went a lot darker with this particular concept, but eh, whatever. Yeah, let's throw some stuff at Birdly. I'm mad at him because he let himself get captured again, which is just inexcusable. Yeah. That did something. Oh no. It's boiling acid! Yeah, seriously, that is what this is, so make sure you avoid that. And now, when she has her glass full of acid, she has protection. So how are we going to get rid of it? We're going to make her toast and drink it. This, I believe, is actually very similar to an attack that was used by an enemy in the original Undertale. I'm not entirely sure, but it does look similar. So, once again, I think it might be better, actually, for us to do group toast. Hmm. But at the very least, that does put the queen temporarily out of commission. Which can be beneficial. What do we do now? So yeah, we do need to do a little bit of healing. Because uh, some of those attacks the Queen does actually do quite a bit of damage. And she fills it up again. Oh my god. So there's two things you have to consider here. One, the fact that because the thing is moving, the, your area of movement is somewhat changed. But also the fact that the level of the acid in the glass will be changed by that. If you're not careful about that, you can definitely get burned. So yeah, here I'm trying out doing ordinary toasts instead of group toasts. And yes, the queen appreciates how good we are at trucies. We are the best. I don't know, who's, who's gonna do something for Noelle? She is, after all, the most important character, for some reason. Ooh. Susie really took it on the chin there. Yeah, let's let's give her back to that. I'm also trying to get rid of that ass. So the queen at this point mentions the knight, which is interesting. Because that is also something the king mentioned in the first chapter. The knight is apparently the one who is telling all of these people in these worlds how they can set up the dark fountains. Which means he is the proper antagonist of the whole game. Oh. This attack I kind of like. It's a little bit fun. You can't hit the borders of the screen, but you also cannot hit these little touch fuzzies get dizzies. Oh. Knockout. Now, once again, attacks are combined. Fairly typical way to mix things up. I'm not sure if Queen has one more attack up her sleeve here. She might be mostly out at this point. Okay, once again, gotta keep up our morale. And one of the nice things about this is that every time... Oh, God. One of the not nice things about that is when you totally suck. <laughs> Wind. At doing that. And as a result, the fight is longer and you lose more attack power. However, one of the nice things about this fight is that every time you knock the queen out after the first one, another node appears on Birdly so that it is easier to get, uh, get him closer towards being sparable. Much better. Here we have an even more extreme acid attack. This one's pretty difficult to dodge. I think you would have quite a lot of trouble blocking all of these. Ugh. Not pleasant. I've, I've never really liked that much... Uh, battles where you have these big shields that you have to get through by doing special attacks that don't involve doing any damage. I've always liked battles more when you're able to do something about what's being done to you. It's not just a matter of doing exactly what the game tells you to do. One of the reasons, in fact, I've never gotten into the Persona series is that I'm given to understand in a lot of battles, you pretty much need to just do what the game tells you to. And that's kind of a drag. It's not my thing. 
One of the things I like about Deltarune compared to Undertale is that you get more options in Deltarune. The concept of the S abilities and R abilities with Susie and Malse, so that you don't actually have to engage in the little games in order to get uh, enemies to be sparable, was a really nice move, and I appreciate that. Uh, but of course, <laughs> Toby Fox doesn't always follow through on all the good ideas that he has. So sometimes he will make battles in which the main strengths of this game, such as player choice, are completely thrown out the window. Susie did warn us at the beginning of the game that our choices don't matter. But, I mean, that was just her being Susie, right? That's not actually the message of the game. That'd be very dark, and we all know that there's nothing even remotely dark about Toby Fox. Oh. Oh. Whoops. Boy, the queen needs to get a better computer. Hers is almost as much of a potato as mine. Though I imagine she would make a better streamer than me. Yeah, let's just tug on his chain. Get rid of this bullshit. I'm also being more careful here to try to get him more sparable. And the battle's over. Not bad, dumbasses. Hell yeah! <laughs> oh god, not four! This has gone south. Oh shit! That did not just happen. You... You're not a real gamer! <laughs> Alas. <laughs> She was totally hacking. <laughs> Did you see that? She was hacking just now. Oh no. His precious bodily fluids. Oh no. Oh no. Yeah, that, that's tough shit, because that's not going to happen. But it does. But it doesn't. <laughs> Phew. Yeah, Susie is so complicated. She's like a delicate, fragile flower. Made out of poison. Anyway, this might be a good place to stop, but we're not going to stop. The tension is so high, we got to go on, get to the climax, finish this frickin' chapter. Slash kind of just a game. <laughs> but yeah, we got to leave Birdly here. He's, he's run out of energy. We, we kicked his ass, and so he can't help us kick the queen's ass. And now, it's time. These boots were made for walking. Hmm. So yeah, apparently that's all it takes, is a knife and really hating things. That's all it takes to create a dark fountain. You just gotta stick the knife in the ground, and up comes the dark like a bubbling crude. Oil, that is. There's that word again. It's an interesting idea. Hmm. Suspicious. As the big hands go, it's bigger than most. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that was a fairly simple way to solve this particular issue. Susie really cuts through all the bullshit, and I mean that literally. So does anyone remember that giant robot we saw last episode? Because, uh, here it is. Oh, I noticed. But there was nothing I could do about it. Also, that face is hideous. She's been bagging about her final form, but this isn't even her final form.
Oh, frickin' way. We've been mortally injured before, and we didn't give up then, we're not gonna give up now. Yeah, let's use our final form. That sucks. God, I think even Ralsei's stool form was better than this. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and in case you didn't miss it, that was sarcasm. Thank you, Ralsei. <gasps> so, anybody remember the roller coaster? Because it exists. And yes, that is what Birdly did for us. He doesn't have any energy left, but he does have a roller coaster with his face on it. And our sweet puppin' cakey, whatever their name is, friends, came to help us out. Also, Ralks is there for some reason, even though he's a statue. Oh. Is that... no. I'm confused. <laughs> so yes, all of the people you've spared... Now contribute their forces to make the world's superest, fightingest, robotist of all. And then we also get to use the robot from Chapter 1, which is a perennial favorite. It's the gift that keeps on giving. I love that robot. He's the best character. So yeah, remember the punching game from earlier? That is actually the final boss in this game. And... I gotta say, it's a fun final boss. I enjoyed this quite a bit. There's a dolphin in there for some reason. Very vapor wave. So yes, this is our robot. The Thrash Your Ass 9000 versus Giga Queen. So yeah, the first thing I tried was sparing. Not sure why, because we gotta fight. But in fact, your actions don't matter so much in this, because mostly when you attack the queen at this stage, is when she's attacking you. The actions that you can do, relatively minor until you get some TP. So you can defend, which has some benefits. I'm not entirely sure what attacking does, because I mostly waited to get TP so I could do special moves. But like the fighting game from earlier, this does follow normal punch-out rules. You can dodge left, right, or back, and you press the normal attacking buttons to attack. And it really becomes a question of dodging in the right direction and at the right times and then just completely wailing on it. This, of course, is a timing thing. No, I actually really like this fight. I feel like Toby Fox got really creative with it, even though it is largely just punching. There are a lot of things the Queen does that mix things up and make you try, you know, some unorthodox methods. And also, there's attacks where the Queen will just disappear from the main screen and force you to get a little more creative. One of the things I appreciate about Toby Fox is he's never really felt limited by genre conventions. He's always willing to do something funny or different with, a, with his games, so that you can go in a different direction. So, round over. We've gotten rid of our first health bar, and now she is pissed. So yeah, laser mode is nice. It, it raises your... It basically gives you one super powerful attack. Also nice is the healing mode, which we're going to be using pretty soon. And actually, one of the sort of hidden best moves in this is actually defense, which can really save you from a lot of pain in this. Another thing that might not be immediately apparent when you start fighting is that you can still use your items, which means you can heal yourself at pretty much any point, as long as you've saved up healing items for this, which honestly, you really should have. Because the other battles are not that hard, and this demands your full attention. So even though we're trucies with this woman, which was supposed to be something really special, she doesn't remember what Chris likes. Which, unbelievable. Although I have to say, I'm not really sure what Chris likes either, because Chris has no personality at all. So maybe it's understandable. Okay, now she files missile. Fi files. She files missiles. She puts them in a filing cabinet, and then eventually consults them in alphabetical order. But she also fires them from her chest. So yeah, one of the things you notice in round two is that she starts queuing up multiple attacks, which requires a bit more of a Rhythm Heaven special dodgy quality from you. Which I like. I appreciate that you have to start planning a little more in advance and start reading her attack cues a little better in this round. Ooh. 
Okay, she took me to town on that one. But, uh, we're gonna get her back. There we go. Round two, over. Let's finish this. There's still a dolphin. Ten attack, get extreme! This is so 90s, it, it hurts. It, it actually does hurt how 90s this is. <laughs> this section of attacks is a little strange. You have to dodge under her legs, and then later on you have to search for gaps in her conch line of Giga Robot Queens. I don't know how she managed to get multiples of them, but maybe this is just some special move she does where... Oof. That is a lot of kicks. Apparently Giga Queen is training to be one of the Rockettes. Ugh. So much bad dodging in this. This is kind of a neat attack. Queen basically forms sort of a whip of these attacks she's spitting out, and then after a few of them go, she'll just swing them across the screen. Again, you have to be paying attention. The thing about this fight is that it's not actually terribly hard, especially if you have some healing abilities in order to deal with it. But what you do need to do in order to survive it is you do need to pay attention. Which can be a little difficult. Especially if you have ADD like me. I don't really. I just have poor reflexes. So I still have a lot of healing items. Which means really, I'm not sweating too much in this. But I try to start dodging a little better at this point. Because she certainly gets much better at attacking in the later stages of this. It's not just in between rounds, but also by the time her health bar, her final health bar, is halfway depleted, she does start getting a lot better. What the hell was she doing there? Yeesh. Again, she thrashes my ass. So let's thrash back. I believe the way this dodging actually works is that if you dodge quickly enough uh, during one of her attacks, it doesn't matter which way you dodge. You do have a certain amount of invulnerability just from the dodging. But then later on, it actually does start becoming more important uh, which way you dodge. So, for instance, when she does the thing where you need to go back in order to go under her legs, if you dodge very quickly to the left or right, like with the right timing, then it's okay if you do that. But otherwise, if you're a little bit late on the input, you do have to dodge correctly. Which is a nice move. It's not the way Punch-Out works. In Punch-Out, you do actually have to dodge in the correct direction. Um, but once again, Punch-Out is kind of a... Uh, how to put it? hardcore game experience. It's certainly the kind of game where, if you're an ordinary player, you probably won't get very far in it at all. Oh. This is my favorite part of the whole fight. I freaking love that baseball. And it switches. But yeah, this is a lot easier, which is totally fair. Toby Fox makes games for a wide audience, and for people who might not be into normal games. Which means he is not, unfortunately, a gamer, like Birdly. Oh. Yeah, I forgot she could do that. This was bad planning. Hmm. Bobby. Looking good. Mm. See, so yeah, it's all down to Noelle after all. Will she make the right choice? I mean, really, what is the right choice? Is it to let us get crushed? I don't know. I mean, that, that's an okay choice. That's feedback, and I, I always accept feedback. Huh. I cannot self-terminate. 
Yeah, let's let's seal the fountain. Let's do what we came here to do. Right? That's what everybody wants, right? Oh, come on. She was just throwing that out. She spent the entire rest of her time with you bullying you. So, yeah, turns out Noelle didn't entirely dislike her time here. Perhaps related to the fact that she said earlier she enjoys being scared. As long as, you know, there's safe words and stuff. Uh, and Susie is kind of going along, like, oh, this is a cool, this is a cool place. I like being in the dark world. Uh, an idea very similar to stuff brought up in Final Fantasy Tactics Advance. Uh, not to be controversial or anything, but I think Final Fantasy Tactics Advance did a better job, but eh. this game still has five chapters to go. Maybe it's going to do a better job. I have no idea, and probably neither does Toby Fox. Uh, Birdly, what the hell are you doing? God damn it, Birdly. There's a reason we left you out of the puzzle solving. Stop. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> oh, well, thanks, Ralsei, for telling us this now. When you had how many hours to talk about this earlier? Can you please explain the roaring? Huh. Well, yeah, now that you mention it, that does seem like a bad idea. Nah, that probably won't happen. Well, let's just let's just let's just spout the earth and then make stuff happen. Come on, come on, Bert. Yeah, that already happened to Lancer, though. I mean, really, I have nothing left to keep this world alive for now that Lancer's gone. Why should I care? But yeah, it's interesting that Ralsei suggests that if everything becomes dark, that won't actually be good for the Darkners. It will kill them. And then the Lightners are the ones who will have to live and just suffer. Very curious concept. Very different from other Dark World concepts, like, for instance, the one in Twilight Princess. <laughs> so, the typical Toby Fox moral. It was all a misunderstanding. People aren't evil, they're just dumb. And the good guys are also dumb. Everyone is dumb. Yeah, I don't know what I think about this particular twist, but I definitely think Birdly deserves to be chastened. Yeah, Birdly, Birdly's kind of on the spectrum. Just kind of a little bit, kind of. I guess the real friendship was the journey we found along the... Wh whatever. <laughs> yeah, Noelle stood up with the queen. She's, she's got a little backbone. She's, she's a fighter. She's feisty. Not as much as Susie, but you know. Yeah. Sweet dreams. Oh, hi there. I forgot you were a character. I'll miss you most of all, Scarecrow. <laughs> well, that's good, because she probably couldn't think of anything for Birdly and Ralsei. Forget goodbyes. I mean, in real life, you can't do that, as I explained earlier, but this is a video game. <laughs> you can literally be friends forever. Yeah, let's get out of here. This, this place is doing my head in. And they're just chuckling like a bunch of dumb people. 
No, anyway, I... Once again, we have the fountain being stopped. I like the final battle, but I have to say, compared with the ending of Chapter 1, I think the ending here is a little more lackluster. Mostly because it lacks the characters from this world having a change of heart, which is what happened with Lancer, and the other characters, you know, helping you contain the king. Here, it's more a Noel and Birdly thing. The queen, while she is somewhat funny and interesting, she's not a terribly remarkable character, and her change of heart here is literally just her learning something that she didn't know. It's not actually changing her mind, it's just like, oh, the world will be destroyed. Well, I guess I don't want that to happen. It's not quite as emotionally engaging as what I'm getting at. Anyway, yeah, let's just seal up this fountain. It's been a long time. It's been a long episode. Once again, our soul leaves our body. <coughs> that kick-ass guitar riff starts. And we're going home. Good night, everybody, and I'll see you for the finale.